Morning, Glue Troopers. Well, uh, here we are in the Tarvis again. And uh, yes, I know I'm all a little bundled up because by local Florida standards, it's a bit crisp outside. And yes, I can hear all of you Canadians and Northerners laughing at me. Ha, ha, ha. You wouldn't last five minutes in Canada. I know. Uh, so, a uh, couple of goody things to talk about. One, this little uh, Le Sabre, I finally learned to say Le Sabre, not Le Baron. I had really just planned to throw it together, paint it one color, make the tires black, and, you know, maybe put a little chrome on it, put it on the shelf, and, you know, just a, a quick little da-da-da. And I looked at it, and when I started looking at those pictures, I started thinking to myself, you know, this is actually a pretty wicked cool little car. So I'm actually going to kind of slow down and take my time and, 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 uh, Try and do a nice, uh, you know, do a, a real presentable job on it because it's just, it's kind of grown on me. And I wonder how often you buy a kit or obtain a kit just thinking, you know, oh, this is, you know, just something, just don't, 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 you know, no big deal. And then you, you kind of get into it, you know, well, if I do this, and it's sort of the, the, the subject matter grows on you. And all of a sudden now you find yourself really wanting to do a better job. And um, so, I figure after the, uh, um, that was the, uh, that has turned the, the supermarine has turned into, although repairs are underway, we can make it stronger, faster, definitely not better. Um, but, uh, I, I thought, you know, you know, that'd be kind of a fun little, little thing to do. Uh, I've got the, all of the decals and the, uh, on the Waddell Williams, all the decals and uh, specialty parts like the monofilament and the rubber parts and everything, I've put those away uh, in a safe place. I've got them in, a, in one of the uh, document holders with all of my uh, uh, decals to keep them safe until uh, I get the model ready for them. The only one I'll be using while I'm building the model will be the instrument panel. And by the way, I keep, I keep them in my sophisticated filing system where I keep all of the letters and notes you folks uh, send me. I, I, I hang on to all that. And uh, so the other thing was that I was watching a video this morning and I was thinking to myself, uh, this is, I found one that linked into something I'd heard about one years ago. I mean, when I was just getting started in aviation. Now, we all know how beautiful the old jet liners and prop liners are to look at, but they were evolving technology and they were not without certain risks we didn't know about. And in 63, uh, a Pan Am flight, a 707, on a very short hop between, uh, I believe it was from Philadelphia to Baltimore, very short flight, um, ran into some weather and not the worst weather. I mean, there were thunderstorms and stuff, but the, the crew went to a holding pattern to, to stay out of the bad stuff until the weather at the airport got better. It did everything I would have done. Well, I had heard years ago that uh, one of the early airliners had blown up in flight uh, because uh, they suspected that uh, lightning had gone up uh, the fuel vent and gotten into the fuel and made went boom. And it just so happened I was, uh, this, this uh, YouTuber named uh, uh, Alec Joshua Bay does these recreations of accidents using, I guess it's flight simulator, one of the flight simulating programs. And he, he doesn't narrate, but he puts all the information in text and just plays music. You know, they're nice videos. I enjoy them. He, he pays a lot of attention to detail. I imagine he's getting the NTSB reports. Well, what struck a chord with this particular accident was that it was the one I had heard about and they never actually were able to nail down the exact cause. Uh, a chunk of the wing, a pretty good sized chunk of the wing came off. There was evidence uh, of an explosion. Uh, some people were saying that the lightning did it. Some people were saying it ignited the fuel. There, there were a lot of uh, questions about how it happened, and they were never 100% uh, solid. But one of the, I think, I think it was the investigators basically came to the conclusion that uh, between the turbulence and everything, they think some fuel vapors, maybe some sloshing fuel, um, had uh, without getting into the 707 fuel systems, basically. It had created a fuel air. You see, uh, as I'm sure most all you guys probably already know, fuel tanks have to have an air vent, and uh, they have them on jets, they have them on planes, they have them on cars. Uh, I know of a couple of crashes, including the one that killed my dad's friend Bill Cannell, where the absence of a venting source uh, pro created a suction where the fuel couldn't get to the engine. So, fuel gets burned, air has to be allowed in to displace it. 
Well, they think in that venting system that it's possible that the fuel air mixture was just right. There was evidence of lightning strikes on the wing of the plane that it probably just had the right fuel air mixture. That lightning strike ignited the fuel, which caused that uh, tank to explode and, of course, taking the wing with it. Um, real tragedy. The crew did everything they were supposed to do. Nowadays, uh, modern aircraft have actually these, I uh, uh, forget what the exact is, not surge protectors, but they're basically a set of baffles that should uh, maybe hit by lightning. It will dissipate it so it can't get, and it also prevents the fuel from creating that mixture, and that probably came out of this mishap. Well, the reason I went into all that, by the way, if you want to look it up, it was, uh, I think it was 1963, and I believe it was, Pan Am Flight 214, and remember, I, the only reason I can remember that number is from the old TV show Bob Black Sheep. They were VMF 214. Anyway, so uh, it got me thinking about the model airliners. And by the way, uh, Mike Machat over at Celebrating Aviation, Mike Machat's been doing a really great series lately, uh, and he's he's done some on airliners, on the art, and everything. Definitely a must see. In fact, I'll, I'll see if I can put a link below. Um, and uh, the, uh, but the thing where I was going with all this is airliners, especially older jet airliners, 707s, DC8s, are some of the most beautiful airplanes to model. I don't have the, uh, old Hawk kit of the Convair, was it 880 or 990, but that, that would be, you know, that, that's just a, probably aesthetically, I think the Convair model is, uh, the Convair 990s, 880s are some of the most beautiful jets ever made and, uh, transport category jets. But they're all beautiful. I've seen some of the work you guys have done, especially uh, Don Hinton's the Eastern 727. The, 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 the quality of craftsmanship on these things is just incredible. Um, just, these things should be in museums. And uh, But it got me to thinking about, oftentimes, the more interesting a subject is to model, whether it's a dragster or a racing car or a jet airliner or a fighter or a biplane, I've noticed there seems to be a, it's like, uh, what did Loki say in uh, the Skull Island, or maybe a Tom Hiddleston's character, uh, that uh, when they talked about how beautiful Skull Island was, he goes, I find the most dangerous places usually are the most beautiful. It's like the most dangerous machines, the most, you know, the fastest car, the, the, the most beautiful jets. It's, it's like there's an underlying relationship between the prettier it is, the trickier it is, the more dangerous it is. You know, the SR-71 very tricky plane to fly. Now, I guess I could flip that on its head though, because the U-2 is one of the trickiest aircraft out there and it's had uh, a pretty high loss rate, mostly due to accidents. And I don't think anybody's going to call it sleek or beautiful, but it, but it is elegant. So it, uh, with those long wings. So all I'm saying is, is that there, there seems to be, and it's probably just my imagination, but it seems to be there's a corollary between a, a beautiful model and how dangerous the actual machine was and uh, you know when you get something that's that's big and brutish and rugged uh, not you know like the Corsair you know it's got that macho charm to it or a Thunderbolt and uh, the Corsair could be a handful of airplanes especially get on a carrier and uh, it, it, it when you take the most mundane aircraft out there the Piper Cub the Cessna 172 they're also the safest uh, so I'm sure I, that's probably not an accurate assessment. It just, it just seems like, like a Cobra. It's beautiful to look at, but you don't want to get near it. And, uh, those old airliners, I personally, just speaking for myself, I think if you build a model of a, of a 707 or Convair 880, or even, a, uh, you know, they're just, they're just, uh, the most beautiful airliners. Uh, but they could be dangerous. There were the DC-8 with you know less sweep and, and and the way it looks. The DC-8 to me was although a beautiful airplane, I never thought it was as pretty uh, as the 707. But if I'm not mistaken, it actually had a better safety record. And I haven't looked that up, so I could be wrong on that. But I, I believe it because the 70s, the early 707s, they had problems, I believe, with Dutch roll and some other issues and, and things we've talked about. Um, but I guess all those early jets were. They were learning as they went. One other thing real quick. Uh, somebody had asked me about the camera angles, the drone footage and everything uh, on the begin intros and outros. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tack the uh, beginning and end of the evening show on here and uh, uh, just 
do a little analysis, label what's drone footage and what's actual just zoom. Because some of it is just still footage that's been zoomed and some of it was shot with the drone. I just thought that might be an interesting thing to, you know, go over real quick. And, uh, well, that's about it. So what do you think? Do you think, is, is it my imagination, which it probably is, um, or do you think that uh, the prettier airplanes, the sexier planes, tend to be in the real world the more dangerous ones? Hmm? Hmm? So, by the way, uh, probably if the weather's good tomorrow, there won't be any content because, uh, at least not maybe until the evening, because uh, I'm hoping to go out to the RC field and maybe, maybe fly my rocket. We have a beautiful day today, but got too many other things going on. Okay, guys, take care. Model on. Are you in there?